Hello everyone, I'm Dr. E.F. Cod, and I would like to explain Cod's 12 rules for a relational database management system, RDBMS. I understand that these concepts can be difficult to grasp, especially for students. That's why I'm here to provide clear explanations with realistic examples that will make it easier for you to understand. So, let's dive into each rule and explore practical scenarios together. I will present a realistic example for each rule, which will help you visualize how these concepts apply in real-life situations. Please watch attentively as I explain each rule with relatable examples that will make the concepts more understandable. Rule number one, rule of information, all information in a database should be represented in the form of tables, relations, consisting of rows, tuples, and columns, attributes. Example, imagine organizing your contact information in a table with rows for each person and columns for their name, phone number, and email address. Each row represents a person, and each column represents a specific piece of information. Rule number two, guaranteed access rule. Every individual data item in a database should be accessible by using a combination of the table name, primary key, and column name. Example, consider a library catalog with an index at the entrance. The index lists books alphabetically by their titles, making it easier to locate a specific book without searching through the entire catalog. And think of a phone book where you can find someone's phone number by looking up their name. The phone book allows you to access the information you need using the person's name as a reference. Rule number three, systematic treatment of null values. A DBMS should support the representation and handling of missing or unknown data values, known as null values, in a consistent and systematic manner. Example, in a customer database, if a customer's phone number is not available, you can leave that field blank or indicate not applicable to represent the absence of information. Rule number four, dynamic online catalog based on the relational model, the database schema, including the structure and constraints, should be stored and managed as metadata within the database itself. Example, when shopping online, the website's catalog displays information about products, such as their names, prices, and descriptions. This information is stored in a database and can be dynamically updated as new products are added or existing ones are modified. Rule number five, comprehensive data sublanguage rule. A relational database should support a comprehensive and non-procedural data sublanguage, like SQL, to perform all necessary data manipulation and retrieval operations. Example, imagine using a search engine to find information on the internet. You can enter a query in natural language, like asking a question, and the search engine's underlying database language processes your query and retrieves relevant results. Rule number six, view updating rule, all views, virtual tables, that can be queried should also be updatable, meaning that modifications made through the views should be reflected in the underlying base tables. Example, in an online shopping application, you can add items to your shopping cart and update the quantity or remove items. These changes are reflected in the underlying database, ensuring that the cart view is consistent with the actual items. Suppose you have an email management system that allows you to create custom views, such as a view that shows only unread emails. If a new email arrives that matches the criteria for the unread view, it should automatically appear in that view. Rule number seven, high-level insert, update, and delete, the DBMS should provide high-level, declarative operations for inserting, updating, and deleting data, without requiring users to specify detailed procedural steps. Think of a social media platform where you can create a post, edit it, or delete it using simple buttons or menus. These actions trigger high-level operations in the background that perform the necessary database modifications. In a customer relationship management CRM, system, you can add a new customer by clicking on the Add Customer button and filling in the required fields. If you want to update or delete a customer's information, you can select the customer from a list and choose the appropriate action from a drop-down menu. Rule number eight, physical data independence. The applications using a relational database should be independent of the physical storage and access methods used to store the data. Modifications to the physical storage should not affect the logical view of the data. Example, consider a cloud storage service where you can access your files from different devices, such as a computer or a smartphone. The physical storage details, like where the files are actually stored, are transparent to you as a user. Rule number nine, logical data independence. 
the logical schema of a database should be able to evolve independently of the applications using the database. Changes to the logical schema should not require modifying the existing applications. Example, if an online banking system adds a new field, such as a preferred language for customer profiles, it shouldn't require modifying existing banking applications. The applications can continue functioning without being affected by the new field. Rule number 10, integrity independence, integrity constraints, such as uniqueness, referential integrity, and data validation rules, should be specified separately from application programs and stored as metadata in the database. Example, when entering a password on a website, it may have specific requirements like a minimum length or a combination of characters. These constraints are defined separately from the application and ensure the integrity of the data. Rule number 11, distribution independence. The relational database should be able to distribute and replicate data across different physical locations transparently, without affecting the application programs. Example, imagine accessing your email on different devices, such as a laptop and a smartphone. The emails are distributed and replicated across multiple servers, but you can access them seamlessly without worrying about where they are stored. Rule number 12, non-subversion rule. The DBMS should not allow users to bypass the integrity rules and security measures defined for the database. Users should not be able to subvert or override the system's built-in protections. Example. In an online voting system, the system should prevent individuals from manipulating or bypassing the rules. It ensures that each person can only vote once and their vote is secure and protected from tampering. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe to our channel, CSE Lab. Your support means the world to us, and it motivates us to keep creating. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video helpful, and share it with others who might benefit from it. Bye.